Do you know, just turned away then and pulled the rod in. Just looked away. Well, welcome to another live match film. I'm here today at uh, Lindon Lakes. Now this is where I've been fishing the Winter League here on a Saturday, the Saturday Winter League. However, they are running a Tuesday Winter League. Now I'm not taking part in that one. And it's a, again, it's a popular league, just like the Saturday one. However, you can fish the matches as an open match. And that's what I'm here to do today. I fished here at the weekend as part of the latest, it was the latest, it was round five of the Saturday Winter League. And um, the last couple of matches, I haven't really been catching much on the bomb. And I really think that, you know, where I've drawn, I think I should be catching one or two fish on it. Um, I've been catching most of my fish on the method feeder. So I wanted to just come and try a few things out. And obviously, you know, to come here, pleasure fishing and sit there on your own is a completely different ball game from a match. So that's really why I'm here today. Obviously, to try things out in a match, it's obviously a, a real life scenario and more realistic. So there's quite a few anglers here today. I'm not sure how many is on, on the league, but um, we've got four lakes in, I think it is today. I think we've got um, Bonsai, which is the one there. That's the one in front of the tattle shop and the cafe. So we've got Bonsai, I think Benny's is in, Loco and Beaches. And, you know, it's this, I've just got the same kit that, um, that I fish with here on, on the Saturday, which means it'll be a couple of bomb rods uh, and at least one method feeder rod, depending on where I draw. So it's very, very windy. They have forecast some rain today, but I have got my other microphone gear on here. Um, so hopefully the audio is going to be all right for you. But it's just going to be a great chance to just try a few things out without obviously the pressure of performing well for the league. You know, it's almost a throwaway match, but I thought I'd bring the cameras along just to share it with you as well. So I'm just gonna head in now, just have some breakfast with dad. Uh, it's a nine o'clock draw. And uh, like I say, it's completely random. So I could end up on any one of the four lakes. Morning mate, morning, morning James. Morning, morning. Could have your film for Lonely Housewives. <laughs> or husbands. That's alright, isn't it? Yeah. Hey mate, local 41 mate. I haven't been here for a long time. Well, that's an area I haven't been in for a while. I've actually ended up drawing Loco 41. On paper, it can be a great peg. I don't know what the wind's going to be like over there. I think there will be a 12 foot rod going out there today because there's a bit of a, a longer cast there on Loco. So I'm going to get the barrel loaded up. It is a bit of a walk over there. And I'll, uh, I'll just talk you through everything once I get over there and, uh, and see the peg. This is it, 41. I didn't realize it was this one. This is where, um, I think this is the one that Matt Benwell was on on Saturday. And he had a lovely day's fishing. I think he had 90 pound on it on here. I'm gonna have to have a chuck long. Um, so I'll have a 12 foot rod set up and I'm gonna be feeding some bait short as well. And possibly down the margin for later on. It's really gonna be that simple, I think. So we are um, about 15 minutes from the start. So I'm really, still really thinking about how to approach it, to be fair. Um, on paper, I'm on a brilliant area. So basically what I've got set up is, I've got a 12 foot, I'll just do this once, just to show you what I've got, then it's done with the match. I've got a 12 foot uh, Horizon Pro Distance. Okay, it's rated at 90 grams, which is just a nice 12 foot. Um, as the name suggests, distance, it just means it's got a bit of backbone, which means it's ideal for, for any bigger carp and that sort of thing. I'm gonna kick off with that um, out there with an open style method feeder. Now, one of the things that I wasn't sure about is what size feeder to start on. Whenever I've been on this lake before in the, at this time of year, I've really caught on a really small feeder. However, it's much, much milder today. Um, and I don't want to just go crashing a big feeder in. So I've gone down an inter, I suppose it's an inter size or a medium size feeder, as you can see, you know, open method, 30 gram. Okay, I'm going to kick off with that. And then I have got the option of switching that to a, a larger 
again it's 30 gram but as you can see it's a larger feeder which is what I, you know i'd prefer to fish with that it's much more uh, positive and that tends to be the way that we fish for bigger fish but if i'm going to be casting quite frequently i might have to dot the feeder around a little bit looking for fish and so i don't want to use a, a too big a feeder so that's the one i'm kicking off with anyway it's got to be free running all right i've got the atrex pro reel as you can see i'm not sure what size this one is it is a 4000 um, and that has got it's either six or eight pound horizon on there i think it's six that one six pound horizon um no sorry eight eight pound horizon line no shot leader or anything like that i'm gonna kick off with that at bang on 45 meters i've got that clipped up then the other two rods are pretty much identical and these are the rods that i've mainly been using on this venue over the through the winter on the on the smaller lakes you know the ones where you haven't got a longer cast um, and it's just nine foot xrc as you can see there this particular one in fact they're both coupled with xr 3000 reels uh, again with eight pound horizon on there and all i've got on there is basically a 10 gram uh, pellet bomb that's all that is and both these rods are pretty much identical so i've got the same setup same rod same reel same bomb and everything on both of these two rods however the only difference is down at this bottom end i've got one with a band on so i could put a banded pellet on there or a, a grain of corn and then the other one has just got a speed stop on there basically so i can i can put obviously corn on that as well or multiple pieces of corn uh, and i can put bread on there as well I don't think I'm going to go down the bread route. Uh, my confidence just lies more around the corn, if I am going to catch on a um, on a bomb, and the pellet as well. So I just think it's so mild. I've just looked at the temperature gauge on the van. It's saying it's um, uh, 12 degrees now, you know, which is like, so warm for this time of year and, uh, compared to how it has been. I haven't seen many fish moving around, which is surprising considering the wind. Um, but obviously you can see the wind, it's pretty much off our backs. So we may find that they may have pushed the fish across. We, we don't know, you know, we're only guessing at this stage. Um, so my idea with this is, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed, because it is milder, I'm gonna stick with my confidence for today. So I'm gonna fish with pellets. I'm gonna lose feed pellets out there via a catapult. I've got a nice heavy duty catapult there. I'm gonna lose feed pellets out there, but I'm also gonna feed some corn, but I think I'm gonna feed that down to my left. So as you can see, I've got this, lot, this margin here the other platform is the other side of the tree, but that tree goes out onto a bit of a point. So I'm actually going to lose, some, lose feet on corn, probably in line with that digger, somewhere there by hand, which will be easy with this wind off my back. And only six, seven, eight metres down that, down that line, you know, where, where there's a nice depth, hopefully where it's a little bit quiet as well. And then I'm going to fire pellets straight out in front of me it's about i don't know 15 20 meters depending on on the wind so that is it that's all i'm going to do i'm going to keep it really simple i can see what's happening around me and um yeah kick off on the method and then obviously i'll just take it from there depending on uh, what kind of response i get so we kick off on the method or well, this open method style feeder i'm just going to kick off with a nice yellow I've got some uh, six mil band and wafters here. I've got some micros in there as well, micro wafters, and that is it. I am clipped up. I'm not always a fan of clipping up. I'll be absolutely honest. In winter, you know, I like it sometimes when you don't clip up and you're you're dotting around with the feeder. But but I just think I got feeling is that today, with it being mild, I think the fish might be up in the water, as they are most of the time, or off the bottom. I just think by fishing clipped up. Sometimes you, it, it's a better way of drawing them down because you're on that same spot. It, it's just something to try later on. I can always unclip at any stage if I wish, obviously, and take the clip off and go further. Go further. Good luck, lads. Go further and go searching. So I'm going to start on this. I'm just going to double check this line that I'm on, to be fair. I think I know where to cast on this line, on this peg. I'm just going to double check in line with that peg peg opposite there we go so let's get out there so this is clipped up at exactly 45 meters it is uh, wind assisted just on that clip I'm just make that clip to the right there until it hits the bottom just to get that line down and I'll make sure I've got a couple of turns on uh, on the reel if I do look something that needs to run well, obviously I've got the sticks there as you can see the measuring sticks a lot of people ask about and I'm gonna let me just there we go that's a stopwatch set probably just start on 
I don't know, I might give it 10 minutes to be fair. I'm not in a big rush. Initially, just to get a feel for what's out there, see if we get any liners. I'm just gonna see how far I can feed these pellets. These are six mil pellets, as you can see. I'm not bothering with eights. I know a lot of people fish with eights on here, but I'm gonna stick with sixes just because that's where my confidence is. I'm gonna feed these bang in line with where uh, where my feed is going out. I'm gonna try not to feed them too frequently. I'm just gonna get a few out there to start with. Try not to allow for that wind. Sometimes it'll go further than other times, depending on uh, how the wind's gusting. Just gonna get a few down there. Give the fish a reason to be there. Put one more lot in and that's it. Not too daft, but that's it now. I'm just going to leave that. As regards the corn, I'm just going to just going to feed that by hand in line with that digger for later on. And that is it. Obviously, I can feed that easily by hand. I'll try and group it nicely. Three lots. That's it. Done. That's it now. I could keep my eye out what's happening left and right. Not that I want to be doing that. I don't really want to be watching other anglers. I want to fish my own match today. I'm not fishing the league. We've got the bigger landing net set up today. There are some huge fish in this lake. Um, just makes netting them bigger fish easier, doesn't it? Scooping them up. Um, so that's it. I'm going to pour a soup out in a minute. I know a lot of people ask about what's in the flask through winter. I've been on the bovril and the oxo recently through the pepper, with, with the extra pepper. I've got a bit of a, I'm fighting a bit of a cold at the minute, so I've upped the ante, look at that, to something a bit more substantial. That looks fantastic. I've actually got in there, minestrone soup with croutons. There we go, that should help fight, fight this cold I've got. And that's it. So I'm going to give this 10 minutes and then... Uh, Obviously I can keep changing the frequency of casting if I want. I can go to five minute cast and all that sort of business if I feel I need to. Yeah, just a skimmer. I think that's come off. Well, if I'd, um, if I'd missed that bite then, I would have said it were a carp, 100%. It nearly pulled the rod in. It was actually a small skimmer. That's, it's just come off on the way back. That was my second cast. My first cast, I had a, a, a knock and then it all just dropped back, just as though it was a liner, there was nothing there. That had been in five minutes. This one has been in, as you can see there, where it's five minutes, 40 seconds now. So that had been in around the same sort of time. I haven't seen any fish caught yet. So I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. Keep that loose feed going in on those two uh, on the pellet and corn line. indication there it's like a slow liner there were quite a few smaller fish caught at the weekend on here I don't know about on this peg I know there were quite a lot of little skimmers about little stockies there we go oh, it's got to be on that one or is it hung up let's have him yep we got one just wasn't quite sure if that was going to drop back then as though it was hung up on the, uh, you know, as though it had swam across it. Yeah, I don't think this one's a skimmer. If it is, it's a, a bream, more like. Just kiting a bit to the, to the left. Wherever I can, possible, is just try and keep fish away from that loose fed corn line if I can, just to try and keep it as quiet as possible. quite a while since I've played a fish on a 12 foot rod like this. 
all the fishing I've been doing on here has been with a nine footer, a little sort of, you know, bomb, bomb, bomb rods. This one's just coming round now down this left hand margin. Have to be careful because you don't always know what's down there. And as I've said that, it's actually hooked me up. I can feel that, that's grating. That's grating through a snag. Oh no, that's not good, that's not good, that's not good. Oh, if the fish is still on. Don't think I'm going to see this one. Just as, as I was saying about the unforeseen snags and things. Oh, it's much closer in than what I thought it was. I think I'll just pull that out, but I better check that line. See if we can keep it away. <coughs> that wouldn't have been good for the fish to just try and break that or drag it out. Let's just hope that line holds now. Oh, it's an F1. Oh, we've got him. The F1's in here go to a can go to five pound. There are some big F1s, possibly even bigger. Let's just get a disgorger on that one. off the mark anyway get that in the first net the net rules on here are basically just split your fish so I just put three nets in and just split my fish between them okay so let me just check that line the up length feels all right just want to make sure that's not shredded or cut so obviously that's when you can go and crack off straight away on your next cast. Doesn't feel any damage there. It felt horrible down there. It was really grating through something down there, which I need to bear in mind. No, doesn't feel like any damage. <coughs> I'll find out on this cast once. So we're off the mark anyway. Half decent F1. I've definitely got to keep fish away from that left hand. Left hand margin. Got to go back to the same spot, haven't we? A lot hell for that cast anyway, didn't it? So that's a steady start. Only been out there probably four minutes, I think it was, on that cast. I'm just hitting my clip at that side because that's just giving the line a much better chance to sink going into that wind into that ripple so by the time I've tightened up to it and it gets straight it's um, it's a nice angle all the way obviously with method feeder fishing you know the fish are so fucking anyway so let's keep them pellets going in on that line pop some corn down that inside Well, this one's been out there just over two minutes. If it's a bream, this one, or a skimmer. Obviously, got to make sure that I try and keep any fish away from that, that left hand margin. Good size skimmer, that one. They were quite a lot smaller than that caught on Saturday, but so. Another fish, another pound, pound and a half in the net. That rain's threatening now, it, it is forecast. I've got everything zipped up behind me. I'll obviously have to put the uh, storm shield up on the side tray, if need be. I haven't seen any other fish caught. I mean, I'm not really looking around, to be honest. I'm just kind of just trying to fish my own match and like I say, the main aim for today really was to just have a play around with the feeding and stuff on the bomb lines. But obviously drawing this peg, it's, um, I think it's more of a method feeder approach. But having said that, there was an angler and it was a little bit colder. Who drew here, I think, drew here two or three weeks ago and won the match off this peg. About three weeks ago, I think, might have been a bit more, more, I think, four weeks. And, um, 
and he caught on the bomb. So, but it was much colder then. So at the minute, there's no real reason to to change anything, is there? Just to keep that bait going in on the loose fed lines. I'm gonna have to open another tin of corn, I think. So I wanna stay quite positive on that corn line, even though it's only quite short where I'm feeding it. I wanna be quite positive with it. This, that's the, um, I'll show it you when I open the other tin. It's the um, caramel corn, which I've been using here this winter. <coughs> I've got um, two more tins in there. So uh, I wanna be quite positive with the feeding of that line, even if I'm not gonna be going on it while later on even through the early and middle stages I want to stay quite positive with it I just had a cast without any sort of indication I've just gone back out again and this has been out there a couple of minutes and as suspected it's a little skimmer they're all little fish out there I don't know if that's going to continue but that net's a bit too big for these fish don't you think <laughs> um, I'm going to have a couple more casts on this just to see what happens, see if anything materialises, any bigger fish, or see if it picks up. And if not, I think before I make any other changes, I'm going to. Uh, so I'm just going to try one of these micro wafters. Just because I've got a small hook on at the minute, I'm um, just going to match that with with the hook bait that I've got on. And um, I'm just going to have a couple more casts with this, see what happens, see if those small fish continue. And if they do, I think what I'm going to do is just try. And have a couple of casts just been a little bit more a little bit more positive a bit more positive i'm gonna put a bigger feeder on and a bigger a bigger hook bait just to see if that finds a better stamp fish so obviously those skimmers are no good so i'm just going to try this reset that stopwatch try this a couple more times and um if it doesn't really work i'm going to uh, make a change not seen any other fish caught yet other than uh, I think Alan two to my right I've just heard him playing a good fish I heard his reel I don't know if he's landed it other than that I haven't seen any other fish caught well this has literally only been out there 30 seconds it was a good pull actually I would have said uh, if I'd missed it or I would have if I hadn't connected with it I would have said it might have been a decent fish but come off anyway little tiny skimmer that's not good is it so I'm gonna have a change change of hook bait there's obviously too many of those small fish down there so all I'm gonna do is just swap that hook length now I'm not gonna dwell on it any longer just gonna switch it for a, a bigger hook and a slightly bigger hook bait. I mean, it's still not obviously a really big hook bait. I'm still only going to fish with a six mil, six mil bait to start with. But obviously, I can change that up to an eight or even a, a ten mil if those small fish are still there. I'm not seeing any fish caught. The interesting thing is, for how windy it is, I haven't, I haven't seen any fish. I don't think I've seen a single fish. You know rising or whatever i mean there might be further across where the wind's hitting it i'm not going to change that feeder on this cast i'm going to keep the same size feeder on i've got a bigger hook bait on now slightly bigger hook as well just to see if that's going to not really pick out bigger fish but more a case of deter the small fish if that makes sense you know if those small fish can't get that in the mouth it might just mean that but the feeder's gonna and the bait's gonna stay out there longer. Where hopefully a better sized fish is gonna find it. But those skimmers are no good to anyone. But like I say, I haven't seen any other fish caught. So it's obviously not fishing really well at the moment. But it's so mild. You know, it's so mild compared to how it has been. It's got wind on it, breaking it up. Everything looks ideal to be honest, for them to you know, for it to fish well. But it might just be a slow start. So I've got to keep these loose fed loose fed lines going. Those pellets and that corn going in. I 
let's see what the bigger hook and bigger hook bait brings there's little tiny indications there straight away this is one of the reasons why I don't always clip up when I'm fishing at this time of year because what you tend to find is that the first second cast you might catch a fish you know decent fish but then you more more that you cast to that same spot the more of these you're obviously building up on that same spot and if those little skimmers are going to hold me in and, and, and suddenly find a bed of them sometimes you know that that's where it starts to get worse and worse you know those small skimmers come in and that's sometimes when you have to go somewhere else and start afresh that's why when you're not clipped up it's, it's you know whilst you're trying to be relatively accurate you know your feeder is it's in different spots all the time so you're not having that one target area for all them skimmers it's just it's just something i've seen happen on lots of fisheries see that look there indications there straight away with that bigger up bait now you know those small fish if they're still there which i'm assuming they are they might not be able to get in the mouth so we might get some little indications and stuff but and if it doesn't work on i'll step up to that bigger feeder put a bigger feeder on just see if that changes anything with that same hook bait um, and if that doesn't work then obviously i can unclip i just don't really want to have a look on that you know the loose fed lines just yet we've only been fishing 50 minutes and at this stage i've got i've got three fish for about four pound not exactly epic well this has been out there five minutes well five and a half minutes to be honest the little uh, rattle that i had from the bite i thought it was going to be another skimmer i have had one or two little indications as though small fish have had a go at it it's a bigger fish than those little skimmers anyway there just isn't been anything caught around me so really a bit reluctant to make any changes just yet you know i know it's not exactly on fire but i just i think if i can leave the bomb lines a little bit longer then hopefully that might make them better when i go on them i mean the corn line really i'm expecting to be later on with it being shorter but the pellet line it's just cooking i mean we're just coming up to the first end of the first hour now so bit different playing these fish on a 12 foot rod from a, a 9 foot rod completely different a couple of pound it out looks even smaller in that massive landing net so that's fish number four there's a distinct lack of weight I'm afraid so I'll another couple of casts with this bigger bait on got the bait back that time as well which is always good so he's just having to rebate. As you can see that old bait really stands out on that size feeder. Just gonna go a little bit to the right this time, or further right from what we've been going. Fish number four. We set that stopwatch. Just seen uh, the angler opposite, well, the one that's just to the right, catch a fish. Looks like he's on a method at medium sort of range. I haven't seen anything caught to my left. And nothing to my right other than Alan, who I know was playing a fish. Who's two to my right. Well, there's four pegs to my right, two anglers. Definitely room for improvement, to be fair. That's... Um, yeah, we're just coming up to the hour now. So that's four fish now for five pound-ish. Not an amazing first hour, is it? Well, it's been out there just over eight minutes. A couple of tiny little indications, but it's definitely not getting any better. The angler on my left has just had his first fish, about three pound. And the angler on my right has just had a fish, about three pound. So they're the first fish I've seen them catch. I've just heard over to the right on the right hand bank someone say or a couple of anglers say that they haven't had a sign yet so it's not fishing brilliant but I'm just going to switch to that larger feeder now just to try it I'm keeping that hook that same hook bait on this is still 30 gram but it's much bigger as you can see just to see if that's going to make a difference there's an angler that is down to my left he's probably one two three four five pegs to my left He's just playing a fish. He's been playing that a while, actually, so it looks like it's a good fish. 
I just feel like I should be getting more indications of what I am doing, but I think what I'm going to have to do is is um, just have a couple of casts on this bigger feeder, see if it makes any difference. If not, I think I'm going to have to have a look on my uh, on my loose fed pellet line. I'm going to have to have a look on it. Yeah, it looks a good fish what he's playing down there. Let's reset that stopwatch. So I'll have a couple of casts on this, just, just see if what I have, see if anything changes and um, obviously if it improves I'm going to stick on it a bit longer but if not I think I'm going to have to have a look on that loose fed pellet line. Well I've got to apologise, I just switched the camera off there as you can see this has only been out there 40, it's been out there 44 seconds when I hooked it. So whether that change of feed is going to make a difference or not I don't know. get a decent weight I think uh, I need to start bringing one or two better fishing than it I think but hopefully a bit more of an aggressive approach or a more positive approach is going to work is that a bream I thought I was going to be a big f1 look at that muter oh that's not exactly a, a nuisance skimmer is it look at that <laughs> it's almost as good as an F1. Even better when it only took when it only took 44 seconds to get the bite. Even better. I won't mind reeling them back all day long. Let's see if we can repeat it. Still playing that fish down to my left. That wind's getting stronger now. I don't know what it must be like on that other bank for them lads where the wind's blowing in. It must be a bit severe. Oh, he's landed that, that big fish anyway. I don't know if that's the only one he's had. It's the only one I've seen him catch. He's the last angler before that corner. Right, come on. Let's start catching some fish to put some weight in the net. Better stamp fish, hopefully. Keep them pellets going in. as well well that's been out there 10 minutes and I haven't had a single indication it's just completely well it wasn't great anyway but it's gone even worse now no indications whatsoever lad on my left now he's got three fish three f1s for about the same weight as me to be fair we're exactly an hour and a half in so we've been fishing yeah 90 minutes and so uh, I need to change something, uh, I need to find some fish. So I've got five fish for about about eight pounds, which is not very good at all, is it? Not so we've been fishing 90 minutes. So uh, there's nobody catching, like I said, a lot of my last got three, that's the most I've seen anyone catch. He's got about the same weight as me. But one thing I have noticed, which I'm not surprised, but I didn't see any earlier, and that is, I've seen a couple of F1s about um, about 25 meters, just 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 roll like they do. Just gonna make sure that's done. Um, so that's giving me confidence that there's a few uh, F1s kicking about out there within within bomb range. So I'm gonna have a look now. So this is the bomb rig we've just got a band on. As you can see, I'm just gonna band a six mil pellet, which are exactly this you know the same pellet that I'm actually feeding. I really really could do with putting some a run of fish in the net to be fair so um, I'm going to have a look on this line what I'm going to do first is just fire a few out there like I say it gives you so much more confidence when you've seen one or two rolling even if they are up in the water just the fact that they are within bomb range that uh, well it's definitely telling you that there's one or two there I haven't seen, they weren't in front of me there was one to the left and one to the right but it was certainly on the line that uh, I'm going to be fishing with this so let's hope find some on this not clipped up or anything as you can imagine I've got that drag undone just in case I've got that tip tucked down there out the wind 
which is nice. And with this, I'm just going to mix it up. All right, you know, I could leave it in there five minutes. Or obviously, I could have some quick casts as well. Two minute casts, just keep dropping it in if I think, you know, the fish are up in the, up in the water. I can lengthen with the rig that I've got. I can lengthen the length of the, of the actual hook length, the tail. Which, uh, which can help pick off fish if they are up in the water, you know, it just gives them a bit more time to to, um, to pick out that hook bait as it's falling. But we might have to sit and wait. Might have to sit and wait if there are fish grazing over the pellets I've been putting in. But like I say, nobody's catching. So I've got to admit, I feel as though I'm chasing it a little bit. Because I know that this peg had formed three days ago. You kind of feel as though you should be putting more fish in the net than what you are, but sometimes, you know, the peg might not be as good, but, it, you know, it might be as good, but it might get better later on. So, just going to stick to what I'm, what I'm doing. So, just going to have a few casts on this bomb. Hopefully, we're going to get signs that there's one or two fish there. You know, might be getting liners and stuff. And, uh, hopefully... I could just find a run of fish. But meanwhile, the soup is going down very, very well. Well, that's encouraging, isn't it? That's literally only been there a couple of minutes. Didn't get any, any liners or anything, no indications. It was just a straight positive pull out of the blue. Feels a decent fish as well. I'm guessing it's an F1. It wasn't a bite on the drop. But we don't care how they're gonna come. We could just do a run of fish. Just to get back on track for a, a good weight. Yep, that's one. That's it, that's encouraging anyway. First cast on the bomb line. Good three or four pounder that one. I'll shed the hook. No, it hasn't. Shed the pellet, but not the hook. Let's just get that out. That's fish number six. Well, that's encouraging, isn't it? To get, a, get one first cast on it. So what I'm gonna do is, just gonna fire a few pellets in. I don't wanna feed too many, because I don't know how good or bad it's gonna be, but I wanna feed enough to stay confident and give the fish a reason to be there. So that was fish number six. It's the weight that we need, you know. I mean, that's what, six fish? Six fish now for about 11 pound, which is not very good, is it, as regards the stamp of fish on this sort of venue. But plenty of time for it to improve. Keep that corn line fed. I had a big dilemma really this morning. I didn't really know whether to feed eight mils or six mils. Once I decided to have my main longer loose fed line to be uh, to be pellets, I didn't really know whether to feed sixes or eights. I know in summer you can get away with eights. Obviously you can catapult them a little bit further. The range of catapulting is not really an issue today because we've got the wind off our backs. You know, so it's helping, you know, obviously make that job easier and more accurate as well. But sometimes with a six millis, they, they can encourage the smaller fish. Obviously, you know, when there's so many skimmers in here, you know, the, those little skimmers can get a six mil pellet in the mouth. And so I didn't really know what was going to be best. And I still won't know. But um, on that first cast, it was only in there two minutes and there wasn't any sort of signs of little skimmers there. Obviously, that was just a, a proper bite out of the blue. So I'm obviously hoping that's going to be the case. But I just want to get a feel for how many fish might be there. Because you feel as though once you know that you know when when you're not on a line and you're feeding it, it's difficult to to have the best idea about how to feed it because you don't know how many fish are there. You know, you, you know there might not be any fish there. There might be lots of fish there, but unless you're actually fishing it at the time, it can be difficult to gauge how many fish are there. So by me being on this line, it might give me a better idea about how to feed it for how many fish might or might not be there. 
you know, just turned away then and he pulled the rod in. Just looked away. Well, it's not been in there long, has it? Probably, what, three minutes, maybe? But there aren't any indications. Both casts just bite straight out of the blue. Another F1. That's fish number seven. Go on down, mate. Get that hook out. Well, that's certainly much more positive, positive response than the uh, than the method feeder line, isn't it? Much better. Just make sure that hook's all right. Yeah, definitely uh, a bit more of a confidence boost. I've just had a cast without anything, I didn't get any sort of liner, no indication or anything. So I decided to just refeed it and cast back in again and to be honest it landed virtually on the back of a fish. I think it was like a, a big liner straight away and, and nothing materialised. It's been in there about three minutes now and, and I've just up one. To be fair on the bite I thought it was a skimmer or a bream. It's obviously not, it's an F1. Uh, that's one for the middle net, that one. Don't know what they're going to weigh. Two and a half, maybe. Something like that. But whatever. Whatever they're weighing. It's uh, definitely better than it was on the method. Keep a few of those pellets going in. Don't want to go mad with it, but at least while I'm on it, I've got a feeling that I know how many fish are there. So that should give me a better idea of how to uh, how to feed it. Well, here comes the rain. The pellets in uh, decent condition, even though I'm not using them at the minute. Hopefully, it'll blow over. Well, this bomb line's really slowed down now. We're just up to the halfway stage. And that one's a skimmer, as you can see. Not the target fish. So I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give it a rest. Obviously keep keep feeding it. But um, I'm going to go back on the method feeder, I think, to try and build this line up again. at first but it kept going so this is my second cast out there back on the method and um, it's you know the first cast I got rattled off with a, a, a little skimmer this has been out there almost four minutes I'm obviously just hoping that I can catch whatever I can on this obviously if some fish appear then happy days but other than that, it's just a case of trying to build up that build up that bomb line again. And I haven't had a look on the corn line yet. Wind's getting stronger; it's changed direction slightly. It's coming more over our left shoulder now. There we go, another F1. We go after. There are still skimmers out there, which is just making fishing any sort of smaller baits impossible, really. So that's going to take us up to almost probably. I'm going to say it's going to be almost about almost 20 pound, I think 20 pound, which is not very good, is it? But I'm just going to. Stick on this while I just try and build up that, that bomb line again. But hopefully when I do go back on it, I'm going to have a run of fish. Or obviously, 
hopefully I can get a run of fish on, on my shorter corn line to my left. But nobody seems to be bagging up, to be fair, not on this lake anyway. Just cast the method back out and this has been out there three minutes. Three minutes fifteen now, so just over three minutes. There weren't any indications whatsoever, just really slow pull, almost like a liner. I haven't seen many people catching at all, but I've just looked round to my right. Anglers, second and third anglers to my uh, to my right, were both netting fish. And I didn't hear anything, so possibly they've been catching. I don't know. Everyone's very quiet. But this feels a, a much better fish, this one. There we go. That was a proper carp, that one. Much better stump. Don't know what that one's going to weigh. The hook's come out in the net. Try and do that without losing the bait. So that's fish number 11. I don't know what that one is. Five pound, maybe. Don't know if it'll go six. Obviously, a much better, a much better stamp that one. Let's get back out there as quick as we can. We can re reuse that hook bait and still looks all right. And that was only out there three minutes or so, which is brilliant, isn't it? Great bite time. It'd be great if I can keep picking off fish like that on this line, whilst. Hopefully, making the uh, the bomb line good good as well. That'll be the ideal scenario. Just over halfway, a couple of minutes over halfway. Well, my last cast, I never didn't get any sort of indication whatsoever. I gave it eight minutes and um, just thought I'd have a recast. This one's been out there three and a half minutes again. So, so the odd fish being caught now to my uh, to my right. I'm not really watching the anglers, but I keep hearing them catch one or two fish. Nobody sounds like they're bagging or anything, but I have actually just seen an F1. Um, another F1 roll, slightly to my right, but bang on line with where I'm loose feeding my pellets. So that's giving me confidence that there might be one or two fish on there, but I think what I've got to pay attention to is that my last fish on this line was a, a carp. This is feeling like a carp as well, so whilst it's not manic, be a sign that there's one or two carp around out there now so obviously don't want to come off this yet or is it a big f1 could be one of those big f1s that that we see in this lake now it is look at that for a beauty what is it I thought it was a big f1 let's have a look look at that Lovely fish that one. Fantastic stamp. Get that one in the end. That must take us to must take me to around 30 pounds, just, just over 30 pounds now I think. So I've obviously gotta I've gotta stay on this, haven't I? Just get this back out there. Got the hook bait back. Let's get this back out there and get some more pellets fed some corn on that corn line I'm still clipped up I haven't changed from that 45 meter range whether this is a combination of that slightly bigger bait or whether it's time of day who knows probably more time of day but those little skimmers can't get that bait in the mouth now now I've switched to that 8 mil 8 mil uh, band and wafter. That's it, get that stopwatch set. 
that must take us to we must have 30 pounds now maybe maybe 31 let's go 31 here on the side of caution so again three to four minutes which obviously the better size fish is brilliant but the fact that um, they're not waiting forever for them is uh, obviously makes it even better went back out again to that same spot and it was literally only there two minutes and the tips just flown round out the blue into another good fish really interesting that because I wouldn't normally have fish clipped up like this and earlier on it certainly wasn't working but this will be three good signs of fish and on that same spot there's a carp that one let's get him there we go he's another good fish so I don't like using this big net if I'm catching numbers of fish click about six for that one I think it's okay it's uh, surprising that's <coughs> that's three carp now or three good fish two carp and a and I left one on that same spot all in under all in under four minutes well we've got exactly two hours left and since going back onto this on that same line I've hooked a fourth fish and this one's been in just over four minutes there just aren't any signs of any little fish out there you know like there was earlier you know like the little skimmers and that the tips just sitting there sitting there and all of a sudden it's just it's on so we've had three three good fish on this and we've hooked another one which is unbelievable really but you know whether these fish had settled on those mycos what I'd fed earlier when I was fishing this line who knows, so like time of day have they just turned up but at the minute obviously there's no reason for me to come off this and go on that bomb line yet so you know the longer I leave it hopefully the better it'll be when I go on it but in a perfect world I'll never have to pick it up because I can stay on this <laughs> not an F1, it's a, a carp this one well that's four in four casts on that line well that's a much better response isn't it definitely more like what we need middle net that one we've got to keep going that's all we can do isn't it it's amazing how there isn't any skimmers or bream having a go at it now out there we've had four casts and four proper fish unbelievable how things can change and how quickly they can change as well set get some pellets out there again I'd like to open another tin of corn for that left hand swim like so I'm feeding that via catapult now just because it's a lot more accurate because of that wind what was gusting gusting a bit earlier I've had uh, I think I've had three casts three casts sorry without anything, not a single indication. I've seen another fish roll to my left, but within the bomb range, so it's a while since I've been on that line. I was just about thinking of, about going on to it, but I decided to have one more cast, one more five minute cast on this, and it's gone round again with another good fish. This had literally only been in, well, it was two and a half minutes when I hooked it. So again, another very quick bite. Oh yeah, some of the carp. Stay there, my friend. 
but he was well behaved, wasn't he? But obviously, these stamped fish are what can really make the difference from those, you know, two, two and a half pound F1s. When they come in like that, really well behaved, and the bikes are coming in that three, three minute bracket, then that makes it even better. This one's really down, this one. That's it. Got the hook bait back again. That's fish number 15. So I'll get that one in the end net. That should take me close or around 50 pound now. I had two five minute casts on that method feed along and didn't produce anything so I literally just had to have a look on this bomb line. I'm on it now, I've just gone on it with uh, hard banded pellet which is you know what I've been feeding on that line and I'm getting tiny little indications um, but I, I, don't, I wouldn't say that there were small fish indications, I think they're indications of fish milling about but they're not turning into bites, that's the issue. Now I don't know if it's because I've fed too much. I know that's what can happen sometimes there's fish down there grazing about but because there's so many freebies down there that it's just taking them forever to find yours that could be the reason i don't know and I'm, i've just seen a couple of fish caught short albeit with a method feeder so i'm just going to fish this out unless it materializes into a into a fish i'm going to uh, i'm going to have a look on that corn line to my left i mean alan to my four to my right is catching really well they're not massive fish, but I'm not putting anything in the net now, that's, that's the issue I've got. So I'm just going to give this another minute or two, and if it doesn't go around with the fish, I'm going to pick the other rod up with the uh, speed stop on and put a grain of corn on and have a look on that left hand corn line. Climax, wasn't it? <laughs> well, okay. All about decision making, as always. You know what it's like. Um, but that's it. You know, the biggest thing for me is would corn have been better on that long line? That's the biggest thing for today. Uh, we did find some fish on the uh, on the method feeder long, and. Um, you know, interestingly, that's where the carp have come from. Long, I haven't caught any. Whilst I've caught some fish on the bomb line, they have all been F1s. So, it'll be interesting to see what everyone else has caught. I've got about 60 pounds, I think. So, I want to get some gear packed away. Uh, it's going to be a little bit chilly now, but at least that rain held off. Get some gear packed away and then wait for the scales. Well, that's a great way of weighing in with that trolley. It's fantastic. Um, I think I had 63 on the on the clicker. They weighed a little bit more, so <clears throat> they uh, they weighed a little bit heavier. One or two of those fish. They actually weighed 68 68 pound. So I'm really pleased with that weight. I've got to be absolutely honest with you. However, considering the peg that I'm on, I think I've left left a few fish out there. I do honestly feel like the peg was worth more somehow I'm not quite sure perhaps feeding corn where I fed pellet might have been better uh, and maybe if I'd fish with a bigger hook bait from the start 
then that might have picked out some better fish uh, particularly early on when I was getting plagued with those little skimmers and stuff but Alan's going to put a good weight on the scales he's just weighing in now but I think that's the top weight up to here anyway so I'm going to get the rest of the gear packed away get the barra loaded up be really interesting to see the results and uh, I hope we've enjoyed this bit of an insight into what is typical winter fishing but at this fishery as you've seen even on the hardest of days you know you're still going to get a few bites which is what we want when the conditions aren't quite as nice so i'm going to get the results for you but we'll get back there get back to dad make sure he's, uh, he's he's all right for for hot soup and um i'll put the full results up for you